Let's continue reviewing VS Code settings and the setting that we'll start this lesson with allows us to hide this minimap. I do not use this minimap, so I'm going to hide it. And the option that we need in this case is called minimap.enabled. And let's use variables, and this way that minimap will be hidden. Then there are also these guidelines displayed in here. I prefer to also hide them. And this setting is called guides indentation. To hide it, we need to specify variables. And as we can see, those lines are gone. Next, there are some special characters which are shown whenever we select a particular area of code. And those special characters that are slightly visible correspond to spaces. I prefer to hide those characters, so the option that allows us to do it is called render white space. Let's use this option and specify value none. And after this, whenever we select area of code, we no longer see those special characters. Next, as we may have noticed, VS Code always highlights current line. And this behavior is also configurable. For example, if we want to have this highlight only in the left area, right where the line numbers are displayed, we can specify the value for the option render line highlight, gutter, and in this case, highlight will be present only on the left side. But if we'd like to completely disable this highlight, we can choose option none. And that's what I will do. The next option that we'll review is responsible for highlighting pairs of braces. So, for example, if my cursor is currently inside of some block, for example, in this color customizations object, and as we can see, the opening and closing braces are highlighted, I would like to disable this behavior. And we can do so by using the following option editor dot match brackets and the value should be never. So now we no longer see those pairs of braces highlighted. Let's continue. The next option that I would like to specify is called light bulb enabled. And this option controls visibility of a light bulb icon. For example, sometimes VS Code shows this icon, which contains several refactoring options, like for example in this case. But I do not use this icon and prefer doing all those refactorings by using keyboard shortcuts. So in my case, I would prefer to disable and completely hide this icon. And which is why I'm going to use light bulb enabled option with the value false, which is going to hide that icon. So after saving this file and checking it again, as we can see, there is no more light bulb icon. So let's continue reviewing the next setting. There are also some hints that VS Code shows whenever we hover over particular symbols. And those hints are always displayed on hover, but I prefer to show those hints only whenever I need it. So I'm going to disable this default behavior of showing those hints on hover. And later on, I'm going to assign key combination to only show those hints whenever I need them. So to disable those hints, we need to specify settings hover.enabled with the value files, like so. The next option is responsible for showing these arrows, which are used to fold and unfold certain areas of code. But I also prefer to toggle these areas by using keyboard shortcuts, so I'm going to hide these arrows. We can do so by using the following option, called Show Folding Controls. And the value that we need for this option is never. And as we can see after this, those errors are no longer visible. Next, we're going to review a couple of options that allow us to configure scroll bars. So I'm going to create in here a very long line in order to show horizontal scroll bar. And since I usually prefer those scroll bars to be hidden, let's specify a couple of options that allow us to completely hide them. The first option, scroll bar horizontal, allows us to hide horizontal scroll bar. And the other option, scroll bar vertical, is for hiding vertical scroll bar. And after saving the file, as we can see, scroll bars are gone. And whenever I need to know at which position I'm currently at in a particular file, I only take a look at this little indicator. And this indicator is going to change its position as we're scrolling through the file. And if anyone would like to hide this indicator, it is also possible. The option responsible for hiding this indicator is called 
hide cursor in our view ruler with the value true. But since for me that indicator is pretty helpful, I'm going to leave it. Also, there is this slightly noticeable border of this scroll bar. I also prefer to hide it, so let's use the following option. Overview ruler border with the value of false. And the border is gone. And since probably most people would prefer to always keep scroll bars shown, I'm gonna demonstrate a couple more options specifically for controlling thickness of scroll bars. These options are horizontal scroll bar size and vertical scroll bar size to control thickness of each scroll bar. And after saving the file, as we can see, the size of scroll bars has become bigger. So by using these two settings, we can control the size of the scroll bar. But in my case, I prefer to keep those scroll bars hidden. So I'm gonna revert these changes and uncomment these three settings before. Next, we're going to review a couple of options related to cursor. Currently, the cursor is blinking, but I prefer the cursor to be solid. So I'm going to specify another option, cursor blinking, with the value of solid. And I write after saving the file, cursor is no longer blinking. And by default, if we move around this cursor, this movement is not smooth, but we can make it smoother. So let's specify option cursor smooth carrot animation with the value on and right after this, if we try to move our cursor, we will notice that this time cursor is moving much smoother. And to me, this looks pretty cool, so I'm going to leave this option on. The next option is called tab size. And this option allows us to control size of the indentation. But even after saving the file, if we try to add indentation, we still see that indentation size is 4 spaces instead of 2. This is because of another setting called detect indentation. And by default VS Code uses this setting to automatically detect what kind of spaces are used in the currently open file. And since this configuration file uses 4 spaces for indentation, this means that this indentation size will take precedence over my setting. But since I prefer to control the size of an indentation myself, I'm going to disable this automatic behavior and rely on the tab size option. So right after this, as we can see, indentation size now is two spaces. Next, let's review a few options related to font. The first option is font family, which allows us to specify the font itself. And currently one of my favorite fonts is called Denk Mono. But this font isn't free. And there is another free font called JetBrains Mono, which I also use quite often. Both of these fonts look great for coding. And the links to font Denk Mono, as well as to JetBrains Mono, I'm going to leave in this video description. The next option allows us to specify font size. I'm going to use value 14. Another setting is pretty cool, and this one is called Font Ligatures. And what this setting does is basically transforms some sequences of symbols, such symbols that are often used together, and displays these sequences of symbols in a special way. So, for example, if I'm going to save this file right now, we will notice that some of these symbols are going to change its look. For me it looks cool, so I usually prefer to keep this option activated. And finally the last option which we're going to review in this lesson allows us to specify line height. And since I usually prefer the line height to be quite big, I'm gonna choose value 2.5. And at this point we're going to finish this lesson and the link to the repository where all these settings can be found will be in the video description.